and it says the recording's in progress. We're really fortunate to have a member of our uh, council membership uh, committee uh, taking the lead on this today, Ivan Lewis from North Cascades. Ivan, how you doing? Spectacular. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, you know, and, and uh, you were chairing uh, something that happened uh, on Memorial Day. What was that? All right, the, the greatness of family camp. Yeah. And uh, we were just talking about it a little bit uh, before and it uh, sounded like a great, fantastic time. And uh, tell us quickly, let's do a commercial. Uh, what's happening Labor Day? Yeah, so this, this, is, now our, this is now our standing event. Uh, we're going to start the summer and we're going to close the summer with these uh, awesome family camps. So a uh, little, uh, little bit of program, a little bit of opportunity to get into camp and uh, experience the camp thing uh, as a family instead of just as a unit. A lot of fun. Great for back groups. That's great. Well, Ivan, with no further ado, let's go ahead and let's talk about bringing more kids into Cub Scouting. Let's do it. So let's start by sharing this. And here we go. It would help if it was at the beginning of the slideshow, wouldn't it? Look at that. There we go. We know how to use our buttons. All right. So here we are. Uh, all right. So I am. Uh, I'm going to start us off here with uh, with just a quick introduction of our theme. So uh, this year uh, we have we have uh, we have hashtag adventure on. That's uh, um, that is the national um, publication materials. Oh man, this is what I get for double. I'm trying to do more than one thing at one time. And it's always foolish. It never works the way I want it to. There we go. All right, all right, I can focus on one thing. Okay, here we go. <laughs> all right, so national steam this year, adventure on. That's the, uh, that's, that's, that's the core. That's the core of our principle here. Um, uh, Viascout.org uh, uh, is always um, prominent on our our, our um, membership material uh, and uh, and using consistent uh, brand ready uh, information is uh, is a hallmark of, of how we can uh, present a, a forward facing membership campaign. Uh, if you're watching this live, give us a couple of days uh, and. Uh, uh, Mount Baker Council, bsa.org uh, slash membership will be our, our hub for uh, uh, links to the national marketing resources as well as um, local, uh, our local uh, marketing resources as well. Uh, if you're watching this um, on recording, that's where you found it. So look around the page. So we have a pretty straightforward plan ahead of us. Uh, one new member coordinators in a 365 day year recruiting plan. Two is a council led new program, new member event heavy plan. Um, we have council led marketing efforts. We are going to maximize the power of Be a Scout and we are going to support great unit program opportunities through council led programming. So that's step one, new member coordinators and that 365 day um, recruiting. Sustaining a strong unit is about everything we do being a membership event. If we're selling popcorn, that's a membership event. If we're in a parade, that's a membership event. If we are in a park on a nice sunny day in the summer and we have scouts out having a good time, that is a membership event. If we are, if scouts are doing what scouts do, that that is an opportunity for membership. And so um, understanding that mindset, um, really adopting that culture that we uh, as organizations are always looking to offer scouts um, uh, youth an opportunity for our program uh, is, is going to be a cornerstone of our plan. Um, and we do that on a unit level by ensuring that we have a new member coordinator who's, uh, who's invested in that plan uh, on the unit level. Council-led new member events. Uh, our main, a main event um, is the Cub Scout Adventure Day, October 1st at Fire Mountain Scout Camp. 
um, that is the primary advertised event. In North Cascades, we'll also be, um, uh, we'll also be advertising uh, heavily the Scout Night Drive-In and, uh, and, in, uh, uh, and throughout the southern portion of the council in, uh, uh, within the Peach Jar system. Um, we'll be heavily advertising the Haunted Camp program. And we'll talk about those more, but these become fun, engaged programs that we can invite families to through direct marketing, uh, where we direct the scout, or direct the families back to Be a Scout, to find beascout.org, to find the local unit, to your unit, um, to, uh, to, to, to get paired up with, to register for those events. So it allows us to have a central marketing point where we're then directing folks back to the unit level. Council-led marketing, is just that um, we're uh, we as uh, at Mount Baker Council will be investing um, heavily in the Peach Jar distribution system, which uh, encompasses most of Snohomish County school districts. Uh, allows us to do direct um, flyer distribution within uh, within a system that families are already accustomed to. Uh, where we don't have access to that in North Cascades District, we'll be taking advantage of um, Kids Insider and uh, and some direct uh, school printed flyer distribution. And then of course, targeted Facebook and advertising and geofencing um, where available and appropriate uh, to really allow us to target in our audience in the, in the right space to invite them to these great events. Maximizing power of Be A Scout as a, as a point of reference, if we're driving traffic to Be A Scout, that needs to be up to date with um, your unit's uh, current information. We need, um, whether or not that's the member coordinator, which uh, that is certainly an ideal person to be, your point of contact. Uh, it, it can be whoever, whoever's going to be the person who responds to those leads should have that information posted on BS Scout. And then having the information of your units, uh, meeting locations, dates, times, uh, and having uh, that kind of blurb resource of this is what our unit, where our unit's going to meet next, um, is a great way for families to not have to dive too deep in order to gain access to um, the resources they need uh, to join our unit. So, uh, so posting that information and updating that directly to be a scout um, is, a huge, um, is a huge opportunity uh, to direct traffic right to our units. Make sure you also have activated online applications and that you um, are listed correctly as uh, if you're a family pack or a uh, boy only pack. Now, don't forget, to check and respond to your leads. Um, having leads on Be a Scout is only as good as our ability to respond to those leads. So it, it is something that um, is appropriate to, to regularly log in and check. Uh, if you have your updates set, they'll come in on Wednesday and Friday if you have active leads. Um, but responding to those leads in a timely fashion, making sure that they have the resources they need, um, it's, uh, it's, it's paramount to making sure that we can really maximize that tool. So great unit program opportunities. We want, um, as a council, uh, it's it's uh, it's incredibly important as a, as a membership committee, as a council membership committee. One of the 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 core ideas that we um, maintain is that if we can offer great program um, in partnership with unit programming, we create a, a, a very low barrier to fulfilling um, the promise of scouting, and so. Programs like the Family Odyssey and Cub Scout Adventure Camps, uh, the Cub Scout Day Camp opportunities, Aqua Scott, Aqua Sox Nights, um, the Labor Day Family Camp, the Scout Night at the Drive-In, the Girls Hangout Day at Fire Mound, the Cub Scout Adventure Day at Fire Mound, the Weeble Ree Haunted Camp, Memorial Day Family Camps. These opportunities um, allow us to, 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 to push awesome council-led programming with things like shooting sports that we can't do at a unit level, while at the same time, working in tandem and in partnership with the, uh, the, uh, the awesome unit programming that we're already delivering. So it allows us this really great entry point. So how's this playbook all gonna look in terms of the logistics of what do we actually do with this information? So um, our, our step-by-step -step that we want units to, um, to really start to get into, and as, and as a Cub Master, uh, I'm, I'm very familiar with um, uh, the, the need, um, how, how quickly we kind of get lost in the plan um, when we talk about uh, council programming. So, so we, uh, we, want, um, we want this to be as straightforward an operation as we can make it without too many barriers. And so um, that's what we've tried to do is the step-by-step. -step. So identify, train, slash train our new member coordinators. This is a registered position. Um, we'll talk about this in more detail, but it's a registered position within the unit whose, whose sole role is, 
is member um, new member welcoming. And uh, uh, with uh, you're seeing my uh, my my camera, you're seeing my hat. Um, we'll talk about that more in a moment. Uh, step two: plan a year of great unit programming. Step two, three: um, that join night and event backdating. Um, we have to have a fixed point that we work from. Four: update that unit your unit's membership assets. Um, five: we're going to promote. Six, we're gonna have a uh, pack check-in night and we'll talk about that more too. Seven, we're gonna do our join night or event. Uh, we're gonna have eight as our parent orientation and step nine is that second chance join night. Um, as we go through, number one, identify and train the new member coordinators. So this is a committee position appointed by your committee chair. Uh, the responsibilities of course for any committee position are um, defined by your committee chair and your chair organization representative, but the specific roles for that um, uh, for a member coordinator uh, fall to sharing the benefits of scouting, coordinate the unit recruitment efforts, guide the joining and welcoming process for youth and their families, and work regularly and communicate with the district membership chair. So this role allows for a direct connection between a new family that's coming in where we can say welcome to scouting, welcome to our scouting family, and we can have a direct um, point for helping navigate the process. One of the things that we really must understand um, that we, we, we can't forget uh, is that uh, we tend to get stuck in the lingo and the, um, and the this is the way it is um, approach to, uh, to our program. Uh, and for new families, that can be a huge barrier. And so, uh, so for our new member coordinators, um, they can really act as a, uh, a new member advocate, if you will, in the process of um, onboarding and welcoming them into the into um, our units, scouting families. So we can't, as a as a district or as a council, we're not able to help with resources if we don't know who we're reaching out to. And so um, uh, we we need to know who our uh, who our unit new member coordinators are um, and have. A point of reference. If you're watching this um, live, um, we are recording your information, and our new member coordinators will be um, will be reached out to. If you're watching this in the recording, this is the Easter egg you've been looking for. Uh, we are ready for you to email us, um, uh, email your uh, your district uh, membership chair or the appropriate contact. Uh, let them know um, the contact information for your dist your new member coordinator, uh, and we will. Uh, We'll get them their 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 fancy necker there that says um, that says yes I am that new member coordinator I am the point of contact within this unit uh, uh, makes it nice and easy to point out hey head over to the to the scouter in the red neck. So planning that great year of scouting if we haven't already done it yet now's the time we need to have uh, we need to have a great year plan. Um, we, uh, it's hard to bring families in when they don't know what they're getting into. Um, now's the time to sit down, put together our annual PAC planning conference, um, come up with your 2022, 23, um, program year, um, make sure that you're signed up for popcorn, make sure that you've gone through all of your, uh, your budget and your dues and that everything's ready to go. Um, and that you have, uh, you have a, a an awesome program ready for scouts, um, uh, in through the summer and into the fall. Backdating when we talk about these events is crucial because um, we have to start with the join night event to backdate everything else from because that's going to be that's going to be the big publicized thing that you want people to come into and ideally the week after we come back to school um, before other programs start to really gear up but after families have had a moment to kind of adjust to um, their school environment and school schedule. Uh, that week of September 11th tends to be a perfect time. This is of course a unit decision um, and you'll figure out the best for you, whether or not that's a night that you normally meet or whether or not that's a Saturday at a park. Um, it, it's best to find um, uh, a location where, uh, where families are already accustomed to um, uh, to going to and being familiar with, whether or not that's access to your school or whether or not that's a community location. So once we set our join night event, um, once that date is determined, we then need to back date to our, um, to our pack check night. Uh, and so um, one of the big elements that we want to stress is the need to separate join events from everything else we do. And so the pack check night idea is uh, is is literally um, you know like a pre pack or pre hike check. Um, it's uh, checking in with the pack, checking in with your existing families, 
kicking off popcorn sales, distributing peer-to-peer -peer cards, collecting anything you may need to to make sure that your existing families are back on board and ready to go. Um, this event allows you to kind of make sure everybody's ready before you welcome new people into the pack uh, in a substantial way. So determine your join night, um, your join night event, and then backdate to your pack um, check-in night. And this is gonna just be a great um, you know, social event to really bring your families back together. Once you've set your nights and dates, um, once your joint event and your pack event are on and your calendar's ready, go update everything, everything. Your unit pin, your scout book events, your Facebook page if you have one, your website if you have one, any community locations, guides, bulletin boards, posters, tell your unit commissioner of your new dates, everything you can, any place you can think to distribute that information, do so. Um, it is, it is, it's always a shame when we have events planned and ready and people don't know they're there. We need to take advantage of any resource we have to, um, to let, uh, to reduce the barrier to a new family finding our event. We promote it. After we've got it ready and we've got it posted and we're out there, we promote it like crazy. One of the big ways that we promote, of course, is school access. Um, and uh, we hear a lot, of course, we don't have school access. And I, I want to stress there's several elements to this. One is that sometimes school access, uh, the districts know, um, is not the same as us not having school access. So a lot of districts have, have policies in place that don't give us um, the kind of access that we once enjoyed. That does not mean that relationships with PTAs or individual principals do not give us that same um, access in terms of promotion, flyer distribution, scout talks, that kind of thing. And so it's really important that we foster those relationships with our PTAs, we foster the relationship with our principals, and we do that through identifying within our existing families who has those relationships and building on those. So send out, send out a note tonight to your, um, to your scout families and, and ask, who has uh, a relationship with the principal or who has a relationship with the PTA? Uh, and, uh, and, and then can we use that relationship um, to introduce ourselves and build a stronger relationship? That's, that's, the, that's the starting point. And, and, uh, and often that's, um, we overlook it because we, we feel like the no the district presents is just a hard no across the board. But there's lots of elements to this. Of course, even if we don't have any form of school access, that doesn't mean that we can't be posting posters at community locations, uh, at uh, um, uh, church or community events, uh, uh, our public libraries, uh, the, um, uh, the distribution at, uh, or displays at our fairs and markets and parades. Any place that people are is a place that we can um, share uh, an invitation to our awesome scouting program. So that pack check night that we talked about, this is, um, as I said, this is an onboarding event for our existing families. So um, we can call it whatever you'd like. You can call it your first pack meeting. You can, um, you can, uh, you can make it a, a hike. You can make it a day event. You can, you can tailor this to your unit's needs. But the goal is bring in, uh, bring in your families, and just like a pack check before a hike, check, uh, check off that list of essentials. Do we have, are we set for popcorn sales? Does everyone know what the plan is? Does everyone know what, um, what day we're inviting our friends to come uh, participate in our joint event? Uh, do we know what, uh, what, um, what, which of the great council programming um, that we're going to participate in? Really putting those pieces together. And, and pro tip, if we're, uh, if we're able to do this outdoors, uh, 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 spread that message to Adventure On and, uh, and do this, uh, uh, on a weeknight uh, in a popular park. Um, have your scouts come in uniform and, uh, and uh, make sure that you have, uh, that you have invitations in hand uh, for, for folks that are excited and interested in participating. So that joint event, um, there is a kind of buyer's pressure concerns um, that a lot of families feel when we talk about events. And we talk about um, joint events in the context of uh, there's a lot of discussion about whether or not these should be uniformed events or whether or not they should be, um, we should have programming or not. And it really ultimately determines, it comes down to your families, your comforts and, uh, and your unit's needs. But um, what is stable, what's always 
pretty much the same is that we utilize a committed singular focused event where our goal is to onboard families, new families, to join new families um, in a low pressure, but, but low barrier um, way. And so let's talk about what that actually looks like. Setting up a room uh, at a joint event uh, where you have uh, four or five tables, where you have stations that are um, that are designed to be mostly fluid. So um, we see here that they, we've numbered our stations. Uh, it's not meant to be um, any form of a hit this first kind of thing. It's much more of just a uh, divide up the resources um, of what you're hoping to accomplish uh, into, into these key points. So um, one is welcome. Every family as they, as they walk through the door, uh, thank you for coming. Welcome to our unit. Um, here's what this what this process is going to look like, and here's a copy of the parent the parent orientation guide. and And this is a national resource. Um, could be updated to your to your local unit uh, um, or off of the national uh, marketing hub. Um, so that that introduction, uh, the uh, the roster immediately taking attendance, making sure you know who's in the room, um, and you send them onto their way. They head over to another station that says, um, this is what we're doing. And you have calendars and you have, uh, and you have information about books and uniforms and whatever your unit um, wants to show off uh, about, uh, about your great unit's programming, this is the place to do it. And so as they're immediately coming in, they're being welcomed by, um, by uh, scouts and scouters who uh, are ready to talk about um, how much fun we have uh, in our programming and the and the core values that our program um, brings. Remember, if they're at this event, they're here, yes, to shop, but they're also here to join. And so making sure that we're ready to accommodate those families' needs without the pressure is the key. We head to the registration desk, uh, and, uh, and at this point, um, we're ready to direct them to register. Uh, whether or not, um, they are ready right now. Uh, it, the key is to show them the low barrier of entry. That's the key. And so ideally you'd have um, internet in your space uh, that you're doing your joint event and you can uh, use your unit specific QR code uh, or your unit's direct registration link directly off of my.scouting uh, to provide them that invitation. Um, we, we can, uh, if you're having difficulty finding either the invitation manager or your leads on my.scouting, please reach out uh, to your district membership chair or your unit commissioner, and we can help you walk you through it. Uh, but my scout, my.scouting.org, um, and you go to your units, um, you drop down to your units uh, invitation manager, and there's a QR code that can be downloaded as well as the direct unit registration link. And when this, when a family follows that link, it handles the National and Council prorated fees for you. Um, and starting in uh, uh, starting in July, uh, we'll be collecting fees, National and Council fees uh, for both um, the remainder of 2022 and uh, 2023. And so they'll, they'll already be queued up and ready for the charter. You won't need to collect anything further from them other than your units dues. And that it, it's just such an easy entry point. If you do need to use paper forms, make sure that you, uh, um, that you have adequate forms and, and pens. What I like to do is to um, families that aren't quite ready to, to start right then, um, who may need to, to take things home and think about it. I've printed off a stack of my QR codes with my contact information on just quarter pages. And I pass that out to families um, so that they can reach out to us and, or that they can just directly register when they're ready. The checkout is at this point at the end of the process in terms of we're now ready to um, to set them up for what's coming next. So uh, they've registered and we need to be ready right now um, to distribute a book if that's what we're, if that's how your unit works or to um, provide them a, a direct register or a contact information for their DIN leader. Um, whatever information your new families need, now's the time to get it to them. Um, this is the point of making sure that, uh, that, they, that they have the resources um, to know that they're now part of your unit. And then, of course, anywhere during the process, having a Q&A to where there can be an open conversation um, about, uh, about information that, um, 
that may be barriers. Uh, uh, ready to talk about youth protection, ready to talk about your calendar, ready to talk about um, the way your unit communicates, uh, the commitment from, uh, from scouts and families uh, and parents and, and your current leader structures. Um, it's a great time to just be clear and open about how we work as units uh, and, what, and what, um, what we can do to, as I said again, reduce the barriers to access um, to this amazing program. The next process, after we've had our join night, um, we've got them all set up, they've registered in, and now it's time for us to talk about onboarding those families formally. So we really, we, 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 tend, to, um, we tend to try and consolidate how we operate um, our join events. And, and I understand, again, as a Cub Master, I, I, I really do get the urge to reduce the um, number of meetings, number of events that we have to handle. With that being said, this is a huge opportunity for us to have a defined event for our existing families, a defined event to join families in, and then a defined event to onboard our parents. And so separating the tools means that we're not talking popcorn the night that they're joining. We're not talking about um, we're not talking about the commitments that a family uh, is uh, that needs to make in order to make this program awesome, um, more than just peripheral at that um, at that night. We're just identifying talent and we're identifying what families have joined. Then when we bring them in for an onboard night, we can do this as a uh, as a meeting before um, before a meeting where we have uh, uh, we have some some um, experienced den leaders who can. Uh, uh, who can take on a big game for, for the kids, or we do this as um, we do this as an event uh, for parents only, uh, you know, on a different night um, of the week uh, somewhere else. Uh, we have units that uh, uh, they guarantee there aren't going to be any kids. They invite all their new parents to go out to the pub. Whatever your unit's um, preferences and needs, the goal is to get those parents into a room and to go through a a clear orientation of what our needs and their needs are in relationship to our unit. And so as we're discussing expectations, describing the program, talking about barriers, ensuring that we're covering the needs of um, financial needs and, uh, and costs of scouting, uh, we're explaining how the national and council program work, what kind of communication they can expect from our leadership, answer any questions that they may have, and really share the um, the excitement of what our program uh, has to offer, not just um, on the, not just on the side of why their scouts are there or on the side of why they're there, but really merging um, the relationship together in terms of what our program has to offer for their whole family. And then, of course, we're going to do it again. Um, we we have stragglers. We have folks that miss us the first time, and we want to make sure that we can offer. Uh, 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 an easy second opportunity. There's always going to be times that we register scouts throughout the year at other times, 365 days a year, but we wanna have these clearly defined joint events to really drive our, um, our registration process and our, uh, and our DEN structure. And so having a second joint event um, gives us a great way to catch those um, folks that may not have been available or may not have been ready when uh, when the first event came. This can often be done in conjunction with another event, like a PAC meeting in October. Um, just remember, it needs to still be a dedicated joint event. And so typically, um, the, e the easiest way to do this is to have uh, 30 minutes before your PAC meeting or after your PAC meeting uh, uh, be dedicated joint event time. Um, and so you've scheduled that event in October. Uh, you can advertise and, and publicize that information to say, yep, at you know, 6.30 or 6 o'clock or 5.30 before the PAC meeting, we'll have this 30 minute joint event followed by our standard PAC meet. And then you can invite your families to come and support um, the, the efforts of the, uh, of the joint event um, and then transition yourself directly into the meeting. But again, remember, focus on the task of, on, of, of assisting families enjoying um, scouting as its own dedicated event. And here's our timeline of events, because again, I wanna drive the, I wanna drive the fact that um, what, what families, families have been very clear that they, that they appreciate the relationship that they build within scouting, um, within the pack in particular. And so 
we, we are a family organization uh, in, in, in many ways, but, but the, the promise of scouting being delivered at a family level is so crucial. Um, and a lot of our program that we, uh, that we offer to support unit programming is geared specifically for family structure. They're, they can bring tag alongs. They can bring those scouts that are, that are pre-Cub Scout. They can bring their scouts BSA aged kids. They can bring you know, aunts and uncles. They, it allows for um, everyone to come and, uh, and experience that, um, that promise. And so, uh, and so uh, right now, um, if we haven't already done it, it's time to do your pack planning conference. Schedule it, make it happen. Get your calendar put together, get it ready. Then come next month, make sure that before we get into the summer and people start thinking about anything to do with fall, we've updated everything, that our unit um, pins are up to date, that our scout nights are registered or listed, and that, um, and that we're ready to start welcoming folks into our units. Then as we get into, uh, into August, start identifying back to school night events and access. Um, if your school is going to be doing a ice cream social with the PTA, you want invite. You want to do everything you can to build that relationships through July, through August, and be ready when um, an opportunity arises to come and present your unit. Uh, then we've got these, uh, we've got uh, uh, a uh, great family access night to, to program again, the Aquasox night. We go into the pack check um, kind of ideal week right around the same time as um, your hopefully presenting a presence at your back to school. We get into the Labor Day family camp, an awesome opportunity to, um, again, to experience that promise of scouting. September, um, the week of the 11th about, um, you have your joint event. As we get into, uh, as we get into September, we have the movie night, the girls hangout night, and the Cub Scout Adventure Day as, uh, again, these, uh, these, these join, um, uh, join opportunities to really bring in our new families to fulfill that promise. And then our second chance um, join night uh, with enough time uh, to yet again be able to promote Haunted Camp as the method to getting folks to, to luring them in for, um, for that second chance join night. Um, and of course, our Weeble re-event uh, in October as well uh, as, a, as that preparation for um, for getting our scouts ready for spring. Because again, we need to remember um, we're always recruiting to the next process. So uh, as we're, as a pack, um, we need to have a long-term focus on what can we do to make sure uh, that our Weeblow scouts and our lights are ready um, to make those transitions uh, and help recruit for our scouts BSA partners. So this concludes uh, our, our presentation. Again, uh, the council website uh, uh, will be a central point for resources, uh, as well, of course, the contact information for your uh, district membership chair um, reaching out to us. Uh, uh, we can provide uh, support, whether or not that's um, direct in, uh, in unit, um, unit program planning or whether or not that's um, just providing uh, information about our, our council programming efforts. Um, we, have, we have resources to share. Ivan, thank you so much. I'm going to leave the recording on just uh, a little bit and maybe catch a couple of questions um, that uh, participants may have. Uh, one great question uh, from a, a couple of leaders was that, let me find it. Our barrier to new scouts is the need for leaders. It is difficult for a new parent joining scouts to then step up and be a den leader. How do you lower that barrier? Well, was one of the one of the things is this is this parent orientation. It, uh, one of one of the things we um, are, speaking from experience on the Cubs Cub Master side, uh, I, I I don't I don't like the hard ask right out the gate. Um, I'm always told that it's the uh, that it's the default, um, but I, I I soften people up. Um, I I think it's like a lobster in hot water. I want them to get warm before they know it. I it it it's an element of um, we have to find an entry point for our families, uh, for our parents um, that isn't, that doesn't include the word in charge, den leader, cub master, committee chair. Those, um, those are, uh, those are words that, um, that, uh, that many, many parents have learned uh, 
um, to avoid invitations to lunch um, when those words get thrown around. And so, uh, and so one of the things that um, I found, uh, and I'm sure um, Daniel can speak more to this, is, uh, is, is just reducing the expectation point. Our expectation is you will participate. That, isn't, that part isn't the problem. But your participation is you'll participate by at next meeting coming and helping do this craft or this um, this wooden uh, this wooden bear kit or um, help plan this one event. Uh, that being the starting point of the entry. Uh, yeah, and I, and it's something that we've discussed a little bit, and uh, looks like maybe we'll we'll do this in in August. Uh, is do another webinar maybe on on how to. Uh, uh, give you some ideas, uh, best practices for recruiting uh, uh, adults and parents uh, into your leadership. But uh, let, let me underscore what Ivan said. You know, nobody wants to be a leader, but to be the assistant leader, oh, okay, I, I can do that. Or I, to be the greeter at the PAC meeting, oh, I can do that. Or or to be the cookie maker, oh, I can do, you know, and, and, and give them something where they feel a success right away and they feel a help. And then uh, I, I, was a, I was a den leader. I was a den leader uh, the last couple of years. And uh, I was a lion den leader. And then I was a tiger den leader. And I would just share leadership responsibilities. I say, you know, guys, I can't always have it at my house. Can we have it at somebody else's house? And people raise their hands. And, and then I said, gee, would you supply the refreshments? And they said, yeah, we can do that. And then I said, gee, could you do the meeting? And they said, yeah, sure. We're having it at our house, sure. So just slowly incorporate. I think that's Any other nice. questions? Uh, no, no, I want to expand on that. I think that's a nice ideal uh, situation. I think many of us, and I don't mean to speak for everyone, are up against a wall with COVID. Mm -hmm. I'm two dens in my in my pack at this point and if we do not get new leaders from the new scouts coming in we will not be able to recharter next year yeah. flat out exactly. we're not recharter uh we don't have enough leaders within those two dens to even lead new dens coming in and and i have uh, you know i've already held two events in the last two weeks and i have a list of 40 kids that are really interested but I am not going to be able to support them with uh, leaders unless I can get their parents to step up and be leaders. Like I, we don't have what it takes. So, so this is, I, I, I absolutely understand. And, and let me, um, let me back one up to make sure that, uh, that, that I'm not, that I'm not misconstruing my point. Um, my, my implication isn't that we shouldn't uh, ensure that every that every scout's parent, that every scout have a parent that's involved. I absolutely believe that's the case, um, and it isn't to say that we that we don't have this uh, this need to um, immediately fill those holes. What I'm suggesting is that when those families come in, we say everyone's going to have a job. We need every parent to do this, but the job you have is just taking this lesson plan and doing this next den meeting. The job you have is. Um, is to uh, to um, uh, handle um, this uh, the logistics of this one event, and then and then we get them into a position um, uh, the moment we've gotten them um, engaged within. What we run into uh, that um, we're trying to what I'm suggesting we're trying to avoid is that when we when we come in and we say um, welcome to scouting. Uh, by the way, we are a unit run or a parent run program. Without you, um, we uh, we are going to die and not be charter. Um, and so who's going to come up and become master um, can be a very, very difficult entry point for families. Uh, and that's the, that's the only point I'm making. I'm absolutely saying every family is going to give us an adult. 100%, that is the approach. Um, my point is just, uh, as you do that, breaking it into pieces can help that transition point. So I Ivan, thanks. Oh, go ahead, Chris. One last question. Kevin. No, not a question. Okay, so when I recruit, so here you have all the parents that just signed up. So then you just start talking to them. I've had, had Cub Scout, whatever. And then you say, well, you know, we need a den leader. Um, 
you have all the parents here. You can all take one, Dan. We have a leader's book. We have this available to you, this available to you. You're never alone. Uh, any questions, we can walk you through meetings. We can do this and that. And I have yet not got a den leader of all my new scouts. I said, you know, it takes all of you to run a path, run your den. So I just need one person to step up that will say, yes, you'll be responsible that somebody is going to do the next meeting and be that guide person that's going to make sure there is a next meeting. And I've never had a, I've never had a, a problem getting parents to do it. That is not COVID. I'm sorry, I have a gap year. Um, I tried all of those methods that you guys suggested. Ivan, I met you and talked to you at Fire Mountain and, you're, and you made some good suggestions. And I just wanna spitball maybe a couple of those. You said perhaps like me as membership, even though I don't have a kiddo in that den, perhaps I could fill that void. I think we talked about that. Like I could fill that void and I could, when we go to recharter, Hi, I'm Jessica. I don't have a kiddo in that den, but I could be the den leader officially while I then coach and counsel and groom people to do, right? Yeah. Because there's a very tiny window, y'all. It is less than a month and it we we got a gap here now. So I I I have the I'm I spent the entire year as cub master, committee yeah. member, treasurer, and wolf den leader. Um because what was I going to do? Not run the wolf den? A hundred percent. I, I hear it. <laughs> I agree. I, I um, uh, and and I do think that it's just it, it is hard for um for uh, us too because a lot of us in this room um have been taking a beating. Uh, we're we're feeling a lot of hats, and I think there's a lot of pressure to to kind of transfer that um the mantle. Uh, and, uh, and, and if we, we take some deep breaths and we stay strong, we can find these folks and get them ready. I'm going to uh, cut off the recording now. And if we want to stay on uh, for a little discussion, that would be great. But uh, we're at 45 minutes now. I think it's a Perfect. good time that's, that's uh, so happens. that we have it for um, on the council website. I just wanted to summarize a few things, Ivan. Uh, recruiting's all the time. Uh, have that pack uh, new member coordinator have plan do your planning now for the year uh, plan a uh, a uh, uh, join event uh, maybe uh, in September and then a second join event in October uh, have that check-in night for your pack uh, I think those are some of the key things and uh, we are going to take away because it sounds like we're having a good discussion on this on um, uh, how to or best practices for recruiting adults. And so I think that'll be our next webinar, uh, probably in um, uh, late July, pr probably early August. And let's get Kevin um, Kevin up here uh, in front and center, because I know he was. Yep. Uh, yeah, Kevin Nichols here, SCAD executive, and I uh, love to see in the comments and, uh, and uh, uh, I, uh, by the way, uh, Daniel, I would uh, copy all, uh, your chat room things and save it uh, there. But uh, uh, on uh, regarding, uh, uh, especially Dens, uh, I did want to invite everybody. If you are part of a family pack, uh, this year uh, we're part of a pilot program with the National BSA that will enable you as, as when you turn in your uh, mem memorandum of understanding, that your, you and the charter partner will sign that you can now combine dens of girls and boys from basically from the lions through Weeblos one uh they still want the arrow light separate because that's the transition when they go into a uh, uh troop for girls and a troop for boys they, they'd be separated there but that's uh I know a lot of PACs have struggled with that, and that's what National recognized, trying to establish a den for girls and establish a den for uh, the, the boys. In this case, you're going to be able to, to combine those together. And we're going to have a training on that on, uh, on uh, July 6th, and uh, the, uh, we've sent out uh, information on that. So we'll uh, go into details with that uh, there. 
And but definitely we're definitely uh, hearing the hearing what you guys been saying. We will put together also a, a kind of a best methods of best practices on how to recruit adults. Uh, I uh, Ivan, I, I I think what you're doing with recruiting adults is great too. Uh, Chris, I'd love to hear what you said about uh, recruiting. Uh, it is, I think, also about setting expectation. I was a Cub Master for nine years, and one of my things is I always set expectations that your parents. Uh, uh, real quick, uh, 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 Daniel, can I share a screen? Uh, am I, can, I, can I do that? Let's see. Of course you can. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm going to share... I'm going to share something real quick, and then this will be maybe part of the, the training that we do on recruiting. But uh, uh, one of the things that uh, I've seen a lot of PACs successfully do, and, and mine was one of it, uh, is actually what we created uh, was the 100-point adult participation form, uh, where we basically uh, uh, encouraged uh, our adults that by volunteering for 100 points, uh, you'll ensure that we'll have the best program for, for, and you can see how old this one, it says your son. I, we need to update that. I had this in my files. I quickly found, uh, but what, so we use this form that, and we had a couple of volunteers who would go out and go to each, uh, during the, during the adult orientation, the parent orientation that uh, I've been talking about, not necessarily the night that they first hear about scouting and get signed up. It's the orientation. We would go over this and say, okay, we would like everybody to sign up for 100 points. And, of course, den leader or one of the title positions was automatically 100 points, right? So, but then uh, committee member, day camp leader, running the blue and gold, attending roundtables. And we put several, and you can modify this form to anything you want. But, it, but if they could build up, you know, 100 points between, you know, the parents uh you know then they they they've done their 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 job uh they they've helped out the pack so this is the sort of thing that we can discuss uh at uh at a a uh, you know a how to recruit or how best prep ma me methods uh thing and if anybody's interested i i will jennifer i will share this this uh, with uh people right now so uh uh, uh and uh, make sure that people know that so I, 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 Ivan, I haven't stopped the recording yet. I know we had talked about it. Uh, someone had just asked about how do you update your pin? So, so the, the, the two questions I see there, so that, so the updating your pen, um, let's, let's look, can you see that? So this is, uh, this is my dot scouting. So, if you uh, log yourself in, I'm assuming that uh, this is showing up. No one's told me that I'm talking and it's not. So let's see. Invitation manager gets us our leads, our QR code, and our direct link. And then if we go back one more time and we go to unit organization manager, we have unit pen. And that gets us our place to, uh, to do our, uh, our up, oh, holy cow. <laughs> so those who are watching at home, I have uh, I have some updating that I need to do on my unit pen. <laughs> there, there's my uh, my contact information for uh, for the unit, and there I've got my uh, my uh, application online updated. What I don't have updated is since our last you'll see here since our last event we did not update our unit pen to uh, to reflect um, our next joint event. But that's that's it right there. Okay, so I'm going to end the recording now.